Hi, and in today's Microsoft Word tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this fun poster in Word. Now, before you go ahead and produce your poster, you need to decide what sort of colors you want, because you may not like these colors and that's fine, you can fully customize this. So the way in which I do it is I just hop onto Google, five bright color palettes, click on images at the top, and then I go through all of these different color palettes. You can choose from the top ones up here, or you can scroll down. Now, as soon as I've selected my colors, I then just take a screenshot of that palette, and then I go back into Word, and then all I do is just drag and drop my screenshot into Word. Now, when you drop it in like any image, Often it won't move around, that's fine. Just make sure you've got it selected. Go to picture format, go along to wrap text, click on the drop down, and go down to in front of text. And then you can move it anywhere around your document. Now I'm going to leave it down at the bottom here. And the first thing I need to do is decide what color I would like my post background. So I go up to design, I go along to page color and click on the drop down. And here you'll see a lot of colors available to you. Now this section is really important because obviously you'll be selecting a lot of colors throughout this tutorial. So here you have your basic colors, you have some standard colors here, you have recent colors here which you've picked which is very useful to have this menu, and then you have more colors here. Now if you go down to more colors, you have your color wheel here, so you can choose from that. You have a variety of different options along the top here, but the most powerful tool is this eyedropper tool here. If you click on it and move this circle across your document, you can select from any of the colors that you've brought in from your screenshot. You can also select from any image or other artwork you've got in your document, and you can also match it. So I'm going to select this color here, and as you can see, that color has appeared in this square here. Once that's happened, you just go and click OK. As you can see, my background color matches that color swatch there. The next thing we need to do is I'm going to bring in some shapes and just put some color on them, but I'm not too worried about where they go at the moment. I'm just going to import those and just select from these colors so that all of these colors then appear in my recent colors and then I don't have to keep going backwards and forwards to select those colors. So I'm going to go to Insert, Shapes, and go down to this square. Now if you want a rectangle, you can just click and drag. If you want a perfect square, hit the Shift key, and it will draw a perfect square. So once your shape is inserted, we need to just format and customize these colors. So make sure your shape's selected, then either double click, or go up to the Format Pane icon and click. You'll find this menu here. Click on Line, and you have this menu here. Click on Fill, and you have this menu here. Now the Fill refers to the color inside your shape, and the Line refers to the border. So at the moment, we're going to select No Fill for this shape, and I'm going to select Solid Line for the border, I'm going to once again click on my colors, go down to more colors, click on my eyedropper tool, and then select from any of these colors, it doesn't matter which one, we can always go back and change them, and then click OK. And I'm going to go down to width and select 12 points, and then just press enter. Now I can move this shape anywhere around in my document, I can resize it, and using this circular icon at the top, I can rotate it. So we'll just move that to one side for now. Then we're going to do exactly the same, insert, shape, and then we're going to go to the circle. Again, click and drag. Holding down the shift key, you'll have a perfect circle. Again, back over to the menu, no fill, solid line, click on my colors, down to more colors, go to the eyedropper tool, select another color, click OK, back to width, 12 points, press enter, and again we'll move that to the side. Now I'm going to do exactly the same with a triangle.
no fill, solid line, choose a colour, eyedropper tool, select. Now it's important that you select each of the colours from this colour swatch because then they'll go into your recent colours and then you don't have to keep going back to the eyedropper tool. So just press enter. You've just got one more colour, so let's insert let's insert this lightning bolt. No fill, colour, more colours, eyedropper tool, go to this greeny blue, OK. 12 points. Now again you don't have to have 12 points if you want something different that's completely up to you and again you can fill all these in but we'll come back to that in a minute. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert another shape I'm just going to choose a rectangle so these come up now under recently used shapes so I can just select this one here I'm going to select a rectangle I'm going to go back over to my menu and select no line and this time I'm going to select Pattern Fill to just give this poster a little bit of interest. So at the moment my default is blue and white. And here you can see how you can change these colours. The foreground colour is the blue, the background colour is the white. So I'm going to change my background colour to the colour of my page colour. And my foreground colour I'm just going to change to pink. Again you can go back and change these at any point. And you can select from all of these different patterns, it doesn't matter which one. I'm going to select these diagonal lines. And once again, you can rotate this shape and you can stretch it out. It doesn't have to be a rectangle. You can do this as a triangle, it's completely up to you. But all it does is just add a little bit more interest to your poster. Just pop that there. And then just click away from it. So what we've done at the moment, we've got five colours. I'd recommend that you just stick to around about five colours and a white as well because we can use that for our background, for our text. And you can also use it for the shapes as well. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to start to place these different shapes in different locations and resize them. I'm going to get rid of this colour swatch here, just highlight it and press delete and you've got all your colours saved, I'll show you that in a minute. And now what we want to do is we just want to duplicate some of these shapes and change them and customise them. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to hit my Alt or Option key, so I want to duplicate this circle, hit my Alt or Option key and you can see that this arrow has a little cross or plus sign above a piece of paper. All I do then is just click on my circle and drag and I've duplicated my circle. And Then I can go ahead back over to the menu, I can go to solid fill, click on my drop down. Now, unfortunately you can't see it but all in my recent colours along the bottom here are the colours that I selected from my colour swatch. So all I need to do is click on those colours from recent colours. I can change my border if I want to or I can just select no line. You can go ahead and select that border line if you want to, if that's part of the poster idea that you've got, that's absolutely fine. And then I can just resize this, holding down the shift key, here we go, just hold down that shift key and we can just move that to one side. Then again, alt or option to duplicate and then solid fill, I'm going to choose white. Now you can see what I've done there is because I've duplicated it, both of those circles are selected. So both of those actions that I've just done in changing the colour apply to both of those circles. We don't want that, so I'm going to go back, control, sorry, command or control Z, and just deselect those circles and just select the one you want. Go back up to colour and change it to white. Again, I'm going to resize that by holding down the shift key. I'm going to duplicate this one, I'm going to duplicate this one, duplicate the triangle a couple of times, square, circle. Now all I'm doing here, I'm just duplicating everything so that I can just move things around and see how they look. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you put things in front of shapes 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to put the shapes behind each other or in front of each other, just so that you can play around with the design features. So let's say, for example, I want to change this square. So I'm going to change the color of this, go to solid fill and change it to the green. Now what I want to do is put this square behind this pattern that we put in earlier. So all I need to do is to select the shape, go to shape format, go up to send backwards, click on the drop down and select send to back. And you can see that square is now behind that pattern. So now that you know how to customize these shapes and to change the borders and the colors, I'm just going to speed up the video whilst I just create a design. Okay, so the reason I've left this blank space in the middle is simply so that we can start to insert our text. So the way in which I insert text into any kind of poster, and in fact for a lot of my documents, is to use text boxes because they're really, really versatile. So I'm going to go up to Insert, along to Text Box, click on the drop down and select Draw Text Box and then just click and drag. Don't worry too much about the dimensions or where it is because we can change all that and customize it, which is why these text boxes are so great. So all text boxes come by default with a black outline or border and a white background. So we need to get rid of both of those because all we want to do is reveal the text. Now if you do want to customize those borders, you do it in exactly the same way you do with any shape. You highlight it, go over to the menu here, you can select your solid fill colors and your outlines and you can fully customize this text box. But for the time being, we're just going to get rid of the border and the background. So go over to make sure you're on shape options. There's two options at the top here, shape options and text options. Just make sure you're on shape options. Here we go. So select no fill and no line. Then what we need to do is double click inside our text box and as you can see, my curse is flashing. And then we need to just go ahead and input our text. So now we've got all of our text inserted, we need to go ahead and customize it. And you can do that in a number of different ways. Um, you can customize the color and the font and the sizing. And of course, it's alignment within this text box. So I'm going to select all by hitting Command or Control A. Then I'm going to go up to Home. And of course, as you're probably aware, this is the section where all of your font and font customization will take place. But along here is your alignment. So you can have your text aligned to the left, the middle, or the center, or you can justify it, which will stretch it out to each margin. So I'm going to select Center Text. I would like my text white, so I'm going to go to this icon here, which is your font colors, and select white. And I'm going to just increase the overall font. I will change the different ones in a second, but you can use this increase font size icon. And this will take your text size up to the next level on this menu. Now, if I just click off that to check it, that looks great. All I'm going to do now is begin to change the font sizes of some of this text. So I'm going to just double click, select this section here, and then increase text size. Now what you'll see is as you increase that font size, some of your text will disappear. And you can stretch out this text box as much as you want to to fit everything in. Now at the end I'll show you how to centre this so it's all beautifully in the centre. But first of all we're just going to go ahead and adjust some of this text. I'm going to put a line between that one, maybe take the line away from there, increase this text, just increase this bit a little bit, and this one 
Now, that looks great, but I just think a bit of font changing will look better. So I'm just going to make this one stand out a bit. Go up to font choices up here. And then you can scroll through and choose, obviously, from a number of different fonts. I'm going to go to something a little bit fun, maybe. Let's try this one. Uh, let's increase the size of this one. Let's just move this text box up. Okay, so what we're going to do now, just to make sure we're sort of getting text in the right place according to our design, we're going to go up to Shape Format and we're going to go along to Position, click on the drop down and we're going to select this center position here and that's put my text box perfectly in the center of my poster and then you can see how your text is lining up with your design so I love where this text is but it's just hanging around this circle so all I'm going to do is just click on this circle use my arrow key my left arrow key and just move that circle over a bit maybe just move it down a bit right I've moved that text box so command and control Z to go back and let's just move that down and out of it there. Perfect. Now I don't mind it's overlapping here. That looks quite nice. I'm just going to move this square away here. Use my right arrow key. And I'm happy with this section down here. Let's just move this bolt up a bit using my up arrow. Now I'm just going to adjust this Meadow Castle Farm here. Let's go back up to the Home tab. Just adds a little bit more interest there. Brilliant. Now, if you wanted a border around this text, as, it, as I said before, you can go into your Shape Format tab again, and you can go along to this section over here. Make sure you're on Shape Options. Go to Solid Line. And let's just say we want to go to a white border. And let's just say we want a border of 12 and press enter. No, 12, press enter. And then just click off and then you can see your border. Now what you will notice is because I've used this before, I've actually got some rounded edges on my text box. So let's just correct that and put some square edges in. Go back over to my shape options and go down to join type. And here you see I've got a rounded join. Now I just want a mitre and click off and you can see now I have those square corners. Now sometimes the only problem with doing the text box on top of your design is sometimes you can't access certain shapes. For example this circle here. If I try to click on it you can see that it selects my text box because my text box is on top of this circle. So I'm going to have to move my text box. Don't panic. I will come back and move it and click on the circle, just move the circle. Then click back on the text box, go back up to position, click on the drop down and select the center position again. Then you can move this ball any way you like in your design. Now once you've put all this in, of course, you can go ahead and you can fully customize all of this. You can move things around, change the colors. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please subscribe and have a great day.